Hello guys, hello people, welcome back to this wonderful platform, MC Potoski Talk Show, here on Facebook and also on YouTube. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, according to your time. Zoom. Ladies and gentlemen, guys, welcome back to this great platform, where we react to all videos that comes our way and bring you guys the latest happenings around the world, Nigeria in general. So guys, I bring you guys the latest happening today. Just watch the video and drop your comment at the comment section what you think about this video. But before we dive into this video, look at the top here. If it's your first time on this great platform, please consider to subscribe and put on the bell so that whenever we upload any video in this great platform, you will be the first to see it. And don't forget to share this video. To all social media platforms on Facebook, WhatsApp, and Instagram, and also on YouTube. I want this video to go viral. So, guys, just watch the video and I will be right back. Now, an investigation by the UK's national broadcaster, the BBC, has reportedly found significant discrepancies in the presidential election result in one state in Nigeria. As you know, the two defeated candidates in that presidential ballot recently launched legal action challenging the outcome after the APC candidate, Bola Tinubu, was declared the winner and is now president-elect. Well, a BBC investigation has reportedly found evidence suggesting that some results in the key battleground state of Rivers may have been manipulated. A BBC team said they tallied the votes from more than 6,000 polling stations in Rivers State where the official result gave a clear majority to Mr. Tinubu, and that their investigation shows that Mr. Tinubu's total was significantly inflated, while the Labour Party candidate Peter B's tally was reduced. So, what should we make of this BBC investigation? Well, for more on this, I'm joined now in the studio by Arise political editor and director of news, Sumner Samba. Good to see you, Sumner. Thank you so much, Charles. So tell us more about what the BBC has um, uncovered. They seem to have found evidence that the presidential election results in River State may have been manipulated. Yeah, and I would say there's nothing new about that. <laughs> we saw domestic observers like Yaga Africa pointing out to this, mm. and then there was uh, also a publication by Premium Times which adduced to some of the things that the BBC says it has found out. And uh, it's nothing really new. Well, these issues are before the Presidential Election Petitions Tribunal. Uh, nonetheless, we've always known that since 1999, uh, when we returned to democracy, elections in River State have always been controversial and uh, my God, in 2007, mm. the results that came out from that state uh, I mean, where the we're talk of town, breakfast. yeah, I mean, everywhere, <laughs> the same thing until 2011 when we started, you know, cleaning up the system mm. and then gradually, I mean, results not only from rivers, but from other parts of the country. But I can tell you that uh, the uh, discoveries by the BBC, especially in Obiakwa local government mm. area, it's uh, uh, not so distant from what a lot of people have said. And if you know that uh, during the election period, Professor Adias, who was the state chief coalition officer uh, for the presidential election, which is called SCOOP, Mm. Uh, the state coalition officer for the presidential election mm. uh, had raised the issue and saying that, look, uh, there was even a threat to his own life uh, because of the allegations that he had manipulated the election. But he said, no, uh, the, the allegations uh, of, you know, this, uh, you know, tampering of election results actually happened at the polling units and then local government units allegedly. And that uh, a, a lot of people accusing him falsely that uh, they should go down and mm. actually find out what happened. And some of these political parties actually could not fully understand the mathematics that took place in River State because I mean, from the, for the APC to come first at the presidential election in River State speaks a lot of volumes because we know that the candidate was not so much popular mm. in that part of the country. So, I mean, it's elicited a lot of mixed reactions. That state has always been a PDP state. And then the Labour Party was also gaining popularity among some followers there. But when you come to the campaign grounds, you'll see that the Labour Party actually uh, lost grounds in terms of the turnout of people that came mm. uh, for the campaigns. And of course, you know, they were 
uh, state sanctioned things here and there, despite that uh, Governor Nisom Wiki had offered some support to uh, Peter Obi when he went to campaign there. He couldn't fill the uh, stadium, the Liberation Stadium, which is now known as Yakubu Gawan Stadium there. Uh, but in all, this, there's still a lot to be unraveled, and mm. I can tell you that it's left for the judiciary to come straight. Sure. But uh, of course, those who have petitioned also have to prove. Mm. And so uh, the onus is on those who have uh, 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 gone to court to prove indeed that mm. those uh, votes were tampered with. And then, of course, it's left for the courts to actually accept. Sure. But, but in terms of looking at the methodology that was used by the BBC to arrive at this conclusion that they've arrived at, basically after tallying all the results from the sheets that were available and comparing those to the officially declared results by INEC, they um, found a very large discrepancy and that Bola Tinubu's votes had gone up by more than 100,000, whereas those of P2B had fallen by over 50,000, which appeared to show quite a big discrepancy. Yes, indeed. Uh, those challenges were there because mm. of, um, uh, you know, there's what is called the parallel voter tabulation by some NGOs and all of that, mm. election monetary organizations. Now, in the PVT, you will discover that uh, there were lots of NGOs who had, you know, uh, uh, observers at several polling units. And then, of course, you also had uh, uh, the political parties having their party agents and all mm. of that. But, Charles, do you know why the elections in Rivers will always be controversial? Because of the terrain. Mm. There are some areas geographically within Rivers State that electoral officials don't go to. Yeah. Not it's because they don't to want reach. to go to, but yeah. because of the terrain. Yeah. And in 2003, 2007, there were instances where INEC officials were brought into the middle of the sea and told to uh, either want to disappear if they go forward or they should just go back to Port Harcourt City in safety. And of course, some of them had to take the option of going back to Port Harcourt City. Yeah. And when the results came out, I mean, you needed to see all the results uh, coming out from those localities. There are some places that even policemen can't go to. Mm. I mean, this happens in several societies, <coughs> uh, those uh, dark zones where elections are not held. And then you see results being brought out. Mm. But the good thing about this is that we had this voting machine, Beavers. And of course, if you follow what happened at the Supreme Court with the Oshun case and the Adeli case, uh, emergence mm. as, uh, you know, having uh, got his, uh, his, his verdict fully now, there will be a lot to prove at the presidential election petitions tribunal. That's mm. why I'm being careful not to get into certain yeah, yeah, no, discussions because these issues are in court. Yeah. And when the premium times report came out, for example, mm. and these issues had to uh, uh, be placed before the uh, uh, electoral body, INEC, they simply said that they can't comment on it because it's before the tribunal. Yeah. But looking at some of the uh, 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 ways the, the BBC report went, I, I, I will say that they did a great job, mm. just like uh, Yaga Africa, just like Premium Time, because, I mean, they placed the results side by side with the uh, uh, parallel voter tabulation and alongside what some of the uh, uh what's it called uh, party agents had brought back mm. and then from the realities on ground there and you could see that look when they call some of the polling uh INEC officials uh, to want to cross check some of those mm. documents with them the election results some of them were not willing to actually say they authored those results and if you go to the INEC website as i'm speaking with you charles you see where some things are written in in barrels and mm. um, all of that things that, canceled yes, out, yes, canceled out. Of, yeah. some you just see the uh, coalition officer writing that look uh, there was problem in right. this so, so, and, and, and so no, no no figures yes. attached no uh, coalition paper. Mm. So, I mean, it's a but, challenge. But based on that, uh, Sumner, because you, you have a lot of experience in these matters. You followed the elections and so on in this country. What accounts for this discrepancy? Was it incompetence? Was it sloppiness? Or something more insidious in your assessment? Well, it has to do with the human mind, actually. A lot of mm. people don't want a situation where the system works where people come out to vote and then their votes count. Mm. That's why we've had the slogan, one man, one vote, for a long period of time. Uh, the challenges of um, logistics, too, actually uh, create this sort of atmosphere mm. in a situation whereby for River State, and I'll go back to that, because of the terrain, you have to use boats on waterways. Uh, you would have to get to some areas. Uh, apart from the bigger boats, 
you have to go with smaller boats and all of that and you go to some areas by daytime it's already looking like midnight because of, it's a rainforest zone and all of that and yeah, but the some, point is that they're talking about the results that were given yes you see what i mean so basically they're saying we looked at this and we looked at that and it didn't match yeah so w what do you think was behind that yeah, I mean, in one way or the other, mm. uh, there could have been some tampering. And right. that's why it's left for the courts to actually decide. Mm. Yeah. If people tampered with it, the evidence would be before everyone. Because the Supreme Court has said that the only device that you can use to know whether an election was tampered with or mm. not is the beavers. Because the beavers machine accredited people. Sure. So if you said there was overvoting, the beavers would have to show that there was overvoting because it will tell you the number of people yes. who voted and those who are left out. Right. And for these results that were tampered with, if you go to the IREV uh, web uh, uh, website by INEC, uh, you will discover that some of these things that were supposed to have been posted were not posted on time. Mm. And when it gets to the presidential election petitions tribunal, people will have to prove beyond reasonable doubt because mm. it's it's a board of jokes. Look at what uh, Governor Badaru said during the president elect Bolame Tinubu's visit to uh, uh, Port Harcourt, where Wiki hosted. He said Wiki was so much good at mathematics that, I mean, we who have been uh, tabulating election results for a long period of time would have to come and learn from him. <laughs> like that, that sent a lot of signal yeah. and shivers saying that. Look, it looked like something actually happened that yeah. needs to be explained to everyone. That's a very interesting But it will point. be left for the courts because mm. you need to provide evidence. And the governing party actually went campaigning everywhere in every part of the country. Mm. And considering the drama that happened in the men opposition PDP, we already knew that Rivers' result was going to be affected in one way or the other. Right. But for the PDP... Uh, uh, to lose to the APC there, and for the Labour Party to lose to the APC there... It raises questions. Yeah, it raises a so, whole So let me ask you this, because you made the, the very important point of the fact that this is in the court, so let's kind of park that. Um, but as you know, Western governments place a lot of premium on the investigations of their upper crust media organizations and tend to act on those investigations. Could this affect the legitimacy of Bola Tinubu's presidency in the eyes of Western governments such as the UK? Yeah, Charles, you and I know that, um, I mean, having worked with foreign media everywhere, these foreign governments actually do a debrief of some of their journalists when they come to third world countries to actually cover elections and all of that. It's unfortunate that we, as a developing country, we don't do that. But these guys actually do that. And um, these are some of the things that are coming out now to show you the momentum mm. that the Western world is trying to place ahead of the inauguration. This is not just coming out there. It's a grand design to actually say, look, we do not fully understand what has happened during the last election. Our media outlets are doing some investigation. We are also staying back a bit uh, from embracing fully the president-elect. But is this going to stop the president-elect from assuming mm. power? No. Is this going to also affect his international relations? Yes, there's a tendency because he's trying to uh, look for legitimacy in the eyes of the international community. And you would have seen that if the president-elect is out of the country now with less than two weeks to the inauguration, uh, there should have been these heightened expectations. Mm. Uh, you know, him being in Paris or London or wherever he is. But, you know, there have been this orchestrated work by the president-elect too uh, as he goes around the world preparing to come take over power. And so the mood is that of, you know, uh, a cat and mouse game between the international community and uh, the president-elect. But I can tell you with China, Russia, the BRICS countries also trying to look for new partners and all of that, the Western world also being careful. That's why you could see America taking its time uh, to congratulate uh, Balame Tinobu. Uh, uh, the French had to eventually do that. And then, of course, the British. Uh, they are also being careful because if they don't do that and the Russians and the Chinese come uh, mm -hmm. and that Bola Metunubu embraces them on time, it will actually uh, spoil the meal for them That's too. So it's, it's a very difficult There's and a delicate geopolitical situation. Dance yeah, going the on. geopolitics of it globally yeah. right. uh, is one that if Tinubu is smart enough, he'll okay. be able to embrace. Because if the West, uh, I'm so interested in all these election matters, he will quickly run to the other guys right. who are not so much interested in election and human rights issues. But in terms of growing the economy, infrastructure, and all of that. So 
uh, let's be careful not to allow the West to actually drive the narrative of right. the Nigerian elections. Okay. But that doesn't mean that the right question should not be asked and the judiciary shouldn't do its job. Samna, thank you very much indeed. Samna Samba is a... Thank you for watching that video. We appreciate. And this is where I'll be leaving you guys. But if this is your first time on this great channel, please do it to subscribe and put on your notification bell so that whenever we upload any video for this great channel, you will be the first person to see the video. So guys, see you guys some other time.